Welcome back to Tightlining Maryland. I am out, as you can probably see with the sign behind me, um, I am out on the Latorte. I have only fished here once before. It was kind of a spur of the moment thing where I was fishing another stream, decided to hit it, um, didn't really know much about it, and um, wasn't necessarily at locations that I think would have set me up for success. So I ended up getting skunked, and that is something that doesn't happen to me often, but I had done that about two years ago. So I'm back for redemption, and I'm here today with uh, probably about six different spots that I've marked on a map that I want to try to, to hit and see how I do. Um, having read up about this uh, quite a bit in the last couple days, but nevertheless, what we're going to do is we are going to uh, start here at the Conda Gwinnett, I believe it's pronounced, or the Condi, um, some people say, but uh, nevertheless, we're going to start in here. I might even fish kind of the mouth of where the Latorte comes in, because I'm sure some of the fish in that bigger river system are sitting in that refuge of the colder water, um, so that can be a good spot in the summer months, um, and I'll work my way up. And then we'll hit a couple other spots and see how we do today. Just to explain the setup, I've got on my very broken rod still, um, my 10 foot three weight syndicate with a Lampson liquid four five. And right now I've got on uh, something I've tied, which is a rainbow warrior. And then another fly that I tied on, which is a blowtorch. And those are gonna be my two flies of choice today. And we're gonna, you know, go through a bunch of different patterns till we find what they want. Uh, a lot of times crest bugs and sow bugs are going to be on the menu for some of your pickier fish um, you know, out in the slower water, but honestly we're going to be fishing some riffles and faster water and I think a good presentation of maybe even a hare's ear or um, even a pheasant tail or something simple in a, uh, in a riffle situation can land as fish. So with no further ado, let's get out on the stream, let's get to fishing, and thank you as always for tuning back in. I greatly appreciate it. I had my first Latort. Had my first Latort Brown. Got him. Missed him, but had him. He was right underneath of this rock that's right here in the center and set the hook, but missed the fish. This is a nice fish. Real nice fish. Oh no! Oh. Oh, he snapped me off. That was a solid 15, 16 inch brown. Oh, that never happens. Another channel of deep water like my odds uh, now that I see this a little better oh I'm gonna cross back in here try to not disturb the pool too much and uh, fish from this side into here see what would turn up There we go. I lose this guy here in a second just because all the jumps. And he took the blowtorch as well. And we are one, maybe one for five. Yeah. So we didn't get skunked. All right. Gorgeous fish, man. Can't imagine if that bigger one would have gotten the net, what he would have looked like. Gorgeous. Took that blowtorch. Get him back. Boom. Love it. All right. One for five. There we go. That's why you get up in the morning so you can bat 200. 
so we're coming up on spot number two sun's coming up and uh, it's gonna be getting warmer it's gonna be a hot one today and I wanted to get the early bite so we definitely hit it right at the first spot that's for sure and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish this particular section of uh, the Latort with some more riffles and runs and see if we can nymph up some more fish we've been lucky enough to get one hook five and uh, see if we can keep that streak of you know success going Okay, and there we go. Oh, so we're up to two fish. We'll see if we get them in. Lively one, that's for sure. There he goes. All right, we'll take it. That one I count. The other one, I wasn't, I didn't quite have him to hand yet. That one I had already put hands on the line. So we're gonna count that as two. Had to dip my cider a little bit. I wasn't getting low enough in this particular stretch, so just a little piece of advice. You know, I'll give you two that kind of jump out to me that I've already used here that I don't quite talk about much, but um, are important. So first is the water-loaded cast. Getting that thing behind me, so that way the water is kind of taking it down, putting a little bit of pressure on it, and then just a quick flick of the wrist. And as soon as I make that cast, I just lift up and I'm already right into my drift. So then if I'm not only using the water loaded cast and what I'm gonna do is flick into the top of this run, but it really bellies out and it gets to probably, I would bet that's four feet deep or so. So the problem now is that I don't have four feet to tip it on. So with that said, it's difficult to get that to the bottom and I would just be fishing in the middle of the column, which, you know, I already have a fly that does that, therefore I want this other one on the bottom if I can. So since I've only got about three feet of tippet on, what I can do is I can dip the cider, meaning that I'll put, instead of just having, usually what I have is the tippet ring just above the water and the little bit of green, that's what I watch just looking for hits, but um, maybe I drop it down, you know, eight, 10 inches and just now watch the orange part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a water loaded cast, flick my wrist to get that thing up, pick up my rod tip, get a good drift. We're in shallow stuff. Now it's getting a little deeper, so I'm gonna drop that cider down in. Okay, so it felt like we had a hit, so we'll try to drift again. Get it down, 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 drifting. Now we're in the deeper stuff. We're gonna sink the cider, drop it down about eight to 10 inches. All right, now we're gonna try it on the far side. Even if I don't get a fish, it's just one of those things where, you know, I feel like I need to pass that information along. Some people probably know it if you fish a mono rig, but if you're looking to get into fishing one, I gotta try to talk about some of the things that I do. There we go. Picked up one on the blowtorch, a little dry dropper action. That's what we like to see. Let's get this fish on the reel first. I gotta get my net ready. It's my next task. bring this guy in cool he was just sitting right up in that seam right where a trout should be so thank you buddy appreciate you playing along love that blue torch all righty pretty little fish let's get him back there he goes 
nice little medium fish here on this stream you know let me show you real quick the the setup that we're using and what you can you know see that i'm doing something a little different here on the report in my uh second session so what we're doing is we're still using the mono rig and we instead of doing a double nymph rig what i've done is i've done a dry dropper and oftentimes what i'll do is i'll do a tag with the you know nymph or even the dry but for today i tied actually directly to the hook and directly off the bend and then i put a blowtorch on the bottom about i don't know foot and a half underneath somewhere in that range so all we've been doing is just you know slight little you know cast up into likely holding spots and that one was sitting right there in the the seam where he was supposed to be so we'll uh we'll keep chasing these fish and see if they can't be a little bit more cooperative than just one but for now we're uh we're gonna be happy with that on the dry dropper setup the reason why that particular spot looks so juicy is you've got a nice deeper hole right here you've got two lanes of current coming in so with all of that you've got two feeding lanes you've got a nice depth you've got a canopy i mean that's a great spot for a trout to hold um, and I'm sure there's probably more than one in there, but you know, how many we get out of it is a whole nother story. You know, just getting one is a success. But um, anyway, that's just a perfect spot for a likely trout eater to, to be sitting. So glad we got him in. On the brookie of a lifetime that came out to play when I threw this hopper dropper, he came up to hit the, the dropper and settled for the Oh, I can't wait to hit the hopper and settle for the dropper. Let me get this, uh, let me get this on, the head mount on real quick, and then get the net ready. Oh, he did not like that. He did not like that. This guy is an absolute tank. If this is, if this is a wild, or excuse me, if this is a native rookie, this guy is a monster. Oh, come on, bud. Come on, bud. This guy is a absolute behemoth. Oh. Would you look at that? I think the hook is already out. I seriously don't know if it's if it's a native or a stocked fish. I'll let you guys decide in the comments. I just have never gotten a brook trout this big. I mean, he's got to be every bit of every bit of a foot. What what do you think? You tell me. I think he's stocked. To be honest, I think he's stocked. All right, we're gonna take a look at this guy one more time. Just stupid bit. So this was the run that he came out of. Um, he was tucked up in the weed bed or the crest bed. And it was literally my first, first area of dropping a line in. It was probably my second or third cast. And the hopper dropper just did damage on that very, very nice very large brook trout. I mean, that is awesome. So that's gonna wrap it up here on the Latort. It was a nice trip back. I, you know, would have really been blessed to have landed that uh, that nice, probably 14 to 16 inch brownie. But uh, I got a feeling I'll be back for him at some point just to give him another run. But, you know, just getting two in a stream that you've been skunked at is an absolute win. Um, and you gotta feel good about it. So, you know, not only netting those two, but hooking four or five other fish overall successful day so thank you for tuning back in i hope you enjoyed and uh, i'll catch you later on the stream tight lines